Hello and welcome to this first video on refrigerants trends and challenges. This video has been prepared by Torben Funder Christensen, Danfoss Head of Corporate and Industrial Affairs at the Danfoss Cooling Segment. This version includes the latest worldwide agreements and was updated in August 2019. Refrigerant Change The next big refrigerant transition is happening right now and the legal certainties increased when the Montreal Protocol was signed in October 2016. New generations of low GWP refrigerants are entering the market. For instance, CO2 has become more widely used and will continue to do so in the coming years. You will also see a strong shift towards a narrow field of HFC, HFO blends. Many of these new blends are A2L refrigerants, meaning they are mildly flammable. But the market adapts and these refrigerants will eventually become standard. Danfoss is an industry leader for refrigerants, and our controls, sensors, heat exchangers, and compressors are, of course, compatible with the dominant low GWP refrigerants. Our R&D department is hard at work ensuring that our products meet current and future standards. With the high number of new refrigerant blends, testing and qualification of products become a long journey. The complexity will only increase as the old refrigerants gradually phase out, we will juggle adapting to new refrigerants while keeping old refrigerants in the market. This video is the first in a short series of two. Today we plan to cover the megatrends in the industry and how Danfoss is responding to them. In the second video, we will discuss the way forward through the convergence and uncertainties with a focus on exploring the refrigerant groups. This illustration is a good introduction and shows how these refrigerants play a role in the overall climate and energy efficiency debate. Energy efficiency and climate are two of the most important parameters surrounding technology and application development in the industrial sector. This graph shows likelihood versus impact on the industry, and right now, low GWP refrigerants show a strong likelihood to substantially impact the industry. Integrated systems with heat recovery will also have a high impact on our industry, and the likelihood for it to happen is also high, because integrated systems provide tremendous improvements in energy efficiency. An integrated system is one where you combine heating and cooling and utilize excess heat, instead of just letting it go to waste as exhaust. Demand response is already coming into practice and is expected to become more common in the future. Demand response is very important as it connects energy on the supplier side with energy on the consumer side. Our industry in general consumes a significant amount of electricity, up to 20% globally. We can offer flexibility to the supply side, which means in the future, we have to reveal all the value in our applications to become demand response ready. Finally, we have to mention emerging cooling technologies that are under development today, including sorption technologies, adiabatic cooling and magnetic cooling refrigeration. Some of these technologies are not really new, but their relevance is increasing in some regions. Until these technologies become the standard, vapor compression will still be the dominant technology for many years to come. To see things in context, let's take a look at the nearly 200-year history of refrigerants. In the beginning, all refrigerants were natural refrigerants. So now we are closing the loop because after a long cycle of synthetic use, many in the industry are shifting back to using natural refrigerants again. On the other hand, there have also been breakthroughs in the development of new synthetic refrigerants that have a low environmental impact. So it is our belief that there will be a two-fold approach in the future, using natural refrigerants, such as CO2, as often as possible, and using new synthetic refrigerants with low environmental impact. Moving forward, combinations of systems will be used to help minimize the usage of HFO and UCO2 in a secondary loop. Today we can see that a fourth big transformation is ongoing. One of the important parameters to qualify new refrigerants and applications is safety. There can't be a selection only based on the refrigerant efficiency if there is a risk on the safety side. Regulatory certainty is also driving technology development. That's why Danfoss will always push for having legal certainty together with other industry players. Legal certainty and new refrigerant applications is a driver for the industry to start investments in product development. Climate, safety, and efficiency are the key drivers of the refrigerant agenda, and we can see this happening on a global scale. The Montreal Protocol has already phased out CFCs and is currently phasing out HCFCs. According to a new amendment, 
the Montreal Protocol also begins phasing down HFCs in 2019. The EU F-gas regulation is progressing according to plan and is the most progressive of all the HFCs phase-down frameworks. In 2017, the federal EPA in the U.S. recalled the ban on the old HFCs. However, seven states have independently committed to HFC phase-downs. If the U.S. ratifies the Kigali Amendment and the Montreal Protocol, then another instrument will become necessary to phase down HFCs. In addition to these phase down initiatives, we also see many countries introducing taxes based on the GWP values of the refrigerants. This means that the high GWP refrigerants become very expensive in these markets and the demand for low GWP solutions quickly increases. Here we see an overview of the phase down steps agreed to in the Montreal Protocol. With the 2016 inclusion of a global HFC phase-down, the Montreal Protocol now has two categories to control, ozone depletion and global warming substances. It is worth mentioning that developed countries, called non-A5 countries, rely on HFC baselines that are already set, while developing countries, called the A5 countries, have a combination of a set HCFC quota and a yet-to-be-determined HFC consumption quota. The A5 countries are divided into two groups. The majority of them, including China, belong to an early group represented by the purple line, while the blue curve represents India and the Middle Eastern countries. The non-A5 countries are also divided into two groups, with the gray curve representing the North American countries and Japan, and the green curve standing for Russia and many of its neighbors. A full list can be found on the Montreal Protocol homepage. The EU phase-down is represented by the red line and has already begun. The EU phase-down will not be affected by the Montreal Protocol phase-down, since HFC emissions have already decreased by approximately 40% in 2018. You can find more details in the Danfoss Refrigerant White Paper. How do we in Danfoss respond to the refrigerant changes? We advocate for sustainable solutions as determined by our sustainability triangle. The challenge in using new refrigerants with a low GWP value is to balance the demands in the markets. First of all, we need affordable solutions to have a realistic outlook for success. Second, we need the new refrigerants to be environmentally friendly, not only in regards to their GWP value, but also in terms of energy efficiency in the applications in which they are used. The third aspect, which is extremely important for the acceptance of new refrigerants, is safety. A good example here is that you can substitute R22 with propane or other refrigerants in many applications. However, if you have big refrigerant charges combined with a big leak, you might have safety issues. In many countries, it's a grave concern, so safety standards for installation and usage must be followed. So, the real challenge is to come up with a solution that addresses all three parameters, which is what we advocate for. We also believe that having a common industry view is critically important here, so we participate in standardization work that ensures the safe operation of systems. Finally, we develop products and solutions that are compatible with the new refrigerants coming to the market. So, this brings me to the end of this first part. For more information, connect to refrigerants.danfoss.com.